We expect uh, the object to be moving from uh, port to starboard in front of the vehicle. A tense moment on the International Space Station in 2012. With the crew sheltering in spacecraft in case of evacuation, Mission Control tracked an approaching piece of space debris. I don't see anything, which is the good news. In the event, it passed safely by. But the ISS has had to use its thrusters at least 26 times since 1999 to avoid space debris. Not that the space station has escaped collisions. This is the welt left in a window by a piece of debris a few thousands of a millimeter across in 2016. And each collision creates yet more debris. It's estimated that there are well over 100 million pieces of orbital space debris, the remnants of past missions and defunct satellites. And the technology to remove all the space junk is still at an early stage, not to mention a regulatory framework that all spacefaring countries feel that they can trust. How do you get an old satellite out, out of orbit? Do you use a magnet clamp? Do you spring it with a harpoon? Do you get it in a net? And it's into this already crowded, unregulated orbit that some 46,000 new satellites are expected to be launched in the next few years, to add to the 4,000 already in space. Yet there's no single independent entity governing or regulating all the space traffic. And to say that's one of the reasons why the rush to launch is on, in case regulations are eventually imposed. And already there are warnings. For example, that the brightness of Elon Musk's SpaceX satellites, seen here several hours after launch, may mean the end of astronomy. Such is their light pollution. But at a congressional hearing in Washington, D.C., there was another bleak warning. Right now we're on track to have a major collision in low Earth orbit roughly every 10 years. And that's, that's the problem's only getting worse and worse. Currently, there's no way to make a private operator shift the trajectory of a satellite if collision seems imminent. In fact, they don't even have to be transparent about where their satellites are at any given time. Witnesses at the hearing agree that something needs to be done if catastrophe is to be avoided. And speaker after speaker was keen that the U.S. capitalized on its position. If we don't uh, have the United States lead this endeavor, then other individuals or uh, entities will. But it was clear that even as participants spoke of the U.S.'s potential benign leadership in space, senators also saw America's technological dominance as a key instrument of U.S. power projection against other sovereign states. What can the satellite industry do to, to help make sure that communist China does not, con not continue to do what they're doing to try to stop communication in Cuba? As soon as you go... We're in charge. We're we're the uh, uh, the lead country in space. You switch everyone else off, and and you fail to get an agreement. And with no geopolitical trust, for now it's market forces that govern space. Shia Bratansi, Al Jazeera, Washington.